We got Robert Nichols with us, president and CEO of the ABA. Rob joins us from our Washington, D.C. Bureau. Rob, good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us on Bloomberg Business Week this afternoon. You talk to bank CEOs all the time. That's certainly a big part of your job. Get an understanding from them about the business landscape, how the banks are doing, what the challenges are, what they want you to talk about in Washington. Um, how are the banks doing? Sure, Tim, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. So banks are doing well. They're healthy, resilient, and serving the customers and clients and communities that are certainly so important. There are some things, though, that we're working on with, with the Biden administration and Capitol Hill, and that's kind of the regula what we're calling the regulatory tsunami. There's just a ton of regulations impacting our nation's banks, particularly our nation's community banks, uh, that are creating some challenges. And of course, we're pro-regulation. Regulation's super important. And you just want to get that cal Celebration, right, Tim. You don't want it to be too loose, obviously, but you don't want it to be too tight, which would impact credit deployment and, and capital intermediation, which is so important. It's the cardiovascular system of our economy. So it's that regulatory piece that we're really focused on at the moment to get that balance right. And that's everything from capital rules and fees and everything in between. Uh, and so that's a sharp area of focus for us right now with the Federal Reserve, the OCC, the FDIC, and, and the CFPB. And one thing Thing, Tim, in your setup, uh, we do represent banks of all sizes, charters, makes and models from all 50 states, but we don't represent credit unions. They're not in the American Bankers Association, but uh, we've had a 150-year proud history uh, of serving uh, the nation's banks and really helping provide capital and credit that fuels the economy, uh, which is important. Let's get into some of those regulatory issues. Maybe you could start with talking to us about one of the most pressing issues that bank leaders are talking to you about. Um, it'd be great to hear more details. Sure, Emily, thank you. So uh, I'd say a couple of things. Um, one, obviously, the finalization of these capital rules. We think the regulators overshot a little bit. And I'd want to note and praise that uh, Chair Powell did recently say that they're going to kind of go back to the drawing board uh, on that rule, proposed rule. We think that was the right step. So I wanted to appreciate that. So that's certainly one. There's also a series of debates um, in Congress around uh, credit cards. And there's a an effort to actually kind of strip the American people of their rewards cards. That's another thing that's certainly important. Interchange fees themselves, these are fees that actually help banks pay for fraud and cyber protections and also help bring the unbanked into the banking sector. There's a debate over how you can price those fees. Mm -hmm. That's another uh, issue that we're focused on. And one other just broader conversation around fees, you know, every other industrial sector can charge fees for services. We think it's important that banks should be able to do that too. Those revenues to help keep the financial system safe and sound is critically important to the American people. And we'll certainly get into a robust debate with anyone about how we disclose and, and communicate to our customers and clients about those fees. But those are among the things that we've been dealing with. Reg II, a lot of acronyms, credit card competition, right. capital rules well, are Rob, among the things. I want to home in on the um debit interchange fees, because the Fed has proposed yep. lowering the fees on how much banks can charge for using debit cards to 14.4 cents plus 0.04% of the transaction amount. Bloomberg Intelligence estimates that this could be around $3.69 billion. Do you think the Fed is going to finalize the proposal or should they go back to the drawing board? And then do you think that retailers will lower their prices as the Dodd-Frank bill intended or will they end up pocketing the change instead? Yeah, so you said it perfectly, Tim. They have not they've not shown in the in recent history any, you know, price reductions for the American people. They said they would, it didn't happen. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, um, the comments that have all gone into the Federal Reserve have been incredibly critical of the Reg II proposal. So we do think they need to go back on the drawing board on that and show us the math. Uh, we, we'd like to see that as well. So listen, we work collaboratively, constructively with the Federal Reserve on many, many things. Uh, but on this one, we just don't see eye to eye. And in fact, there's some other Fed governors, too, who've also aligned themselves with our view to say, yes, we need to, we need to take a, another look at this particular regulation. Uh, it's important. And listen, um, we, again, want to work closely with them, but we do think that one ought to go back to the drawing board as well. Hey, Rob, I'm wondering how you're looking at fintechs right now, because I think consumers might not understand that if they're 
quote unquote banking, you know, using banking services or what appear to be banking services, they might act not actually be working with a bank. They might have an account with a fintech that offers what 4.5 percent interest on cash. It's it's pretty appealing. Um, to a lot of people, I think. But there are also some challenges, too, that, that come with that. A lot of these fintechs partner up with banks rather than being banks themselves. How do you look at fintechs and the relationship that they, they have with banks? It's a great question, Tim. So two-part answer. The first part is on the policy piece. If someone wants to do bank-like things, fintech company or credit union or anyone else, uh, if, or crypto, if they want to do something bank-like in terms of taking deposits, loans, or payments, they should be subject to kind of bank-similar supervision from, from a safety and soundness and consumer protection standpoint. So one, there's just the policy piece to make sure same activity, same regulation. But then, to your point, Banks work incredibly closely with fintech companies to enhance the customer experience. We at the American Bankers Association have a great group of people led by Brooke Yabara, who's a fantastic executive, where we meet with fintech companies constantly, literally on a daily, weekly basis that want to partner with banks to improve the customer experience. So that partnership model, we think, is incredibly important. But then more broadly, from a policy standpoint, we do want to make sure if, if any entity, crypto, uh, fintech companies, et cetera, want to, all the kind of the folks in the shadow banking system, if they want to do something bank-like, we're all for just competition. We just want a level playing field. So we want to make sure same activity, same regulation. We don't have a lot of time left, but we can't let you go without asking about the upcoming election. Who's better for the banks, Rob, Harris or Trump? So we don't get involved in presidential races, Emily, but I will say we will work with whoever the American people send to Washington next year. Uh, and if it's former President Trump or Vice President Harris, we will work incredibly collaboratively with their team to make sure that regulatory balance uh, is proper so that the U.S. banking system can serve the uh, U.S. economy in the manner that we need it to. Uh, and so I, I don't know, not here to make a prediction today. We mm -hmm. don't get involved in presidential race, but we're going to work with either uh, the future president, Harris, or Trump very closely. Uh, 20 seconds, Trump's comments over the weekend at the Bitcoin conference, uh, net positive or net negative for your members? I would say this on, on crypto, we want to make sure that it's regulated. Uh, it need, there needs to be regulation. There isn't. And I'm, I'm heartened that Republicans and Democrats alike uh, and both of the major candidates are right. talking about some sort of regulatory architecture around crypto. I think it, that's good. Rob, really appreciate you taking the time. Rob Nichols, president and CEO over at the ABA, American Bankers Association, joining us from Washington, D.C.